Good evening. First tonight, 42 asylum seekers from West Papua have begun a new life in Melbourne. Their emotional arrival was soured by news that Jakarta may withdraw support for tracking illegal migration in the region. Free for now, a young boy arrives in Melbourne to a warm welcome. With him, 41 other West Papuans on their first steps to a new life. Despite their personal joy, there's a different message from home. Today we're happy, but in West Papua land, we're still suffering. The group fled the Indonesian-ruled province fearing oppression. Each has a protection visa granting access to Centrelink payments, Medicare and trauma counselling. By God of Indonesia, in my eyes, a witness. Lawyers say the Indonesian government is turning a blind eye to the atrocities. West Papuans face... Uh, undoubted uh, vicious human rights abuse on a daily basis. Canberra's decision to accept the asylum seekers has heightened tension between the countries. Jakarta announcing it may stop cooperating on illegal migration and people trafficking. Following an initial group orientation process, the West Papuans will be split up and accommodated in separate homes provided by various church groups. Anyone who requires counselling for past experiences of trauma or torture will receive that counselling as well. We just need protection, no other thing. Protection only. The visas are valid for three years. Rakhal Eberly, 10 years. West Papuan asylum seekers arrived in Melbourne today and immediately burst into song. Emotions overflowed as they made a plea for independence from Indonesia. A grey morning in Melbourne and the first glimpse of their new home. Welcome, welcome. Granted temporary protection visas after fleeing the troubled West Papuan province, they used a dugout tree trunk to sail to Cape York. The asylum seekers are mostly university students. Some of the children were sent alone, their parents believing it was the only way to protect them. It's great decision. Respecting our human right. After two stints in prison for his political actions, the former university lecturer said he feared for his life. I see my friends shoot by gun of Indonesia in my eyes, a witness. It's claimed the group have further evidence of atrocities. It's actually uh, quite a remarkable story of survival. It showed great courage and determination. The granting of these visas caused diplomatic tensions between Australia and Indonesia, but the group say that's the last thing they wanted. Melbourne was chosen because of its large West Papuan community. One of the 43 remains on Christmas Island awaiting his visa. The rest say English lessons are their priority. Joe Stone, seven Home seekers have arrived in Melbourne to begin new lives. While worried about relatives left behind, they say they had to flee to bring their country's plight to the attention of the world. Nick Coe has been with them. Nick. Peter, a short time ago, Nine News was given exclusive access to the West Papuans as they settle into a secret location in the city. It's the end of their first full day on the Australian mainland, but in a sense, it's also the end of a long road. It's a long way from the village of his birth, but for Herman Wangai and 42 other West Papuans, for now, this hotel is home. West Papua is my homeland. We're fighting for freedom in West Papua. It may be a Spartan existence, but Herman's wife says it's a vast improvement on life in her homeland. Yes, uh, we are uh, missing them very deeply, but uh, we're prepared to put up with that feeling of separation. Uh, for the sake of independence. The Wang guys and 40 others arrived in Melbourne this morning. Some are young, handed to the asylum seekers by parents trusting that they may find a better life in another land. A song of independence upon arrival, free at last from what they describe as the tyranny of Indonesian rule. Today is golden time for West Papuan. Golden time for me and my friends. Mr Wangai says he's been jailed twice without charge for protesting Indonesian rule in West Papua and that he is one of the lucky ones. I see my friends shoot by gun of Indonesia in 
my eyes. A witness. The group of 42 has been given three-year protection visas, but the issue continues to further strain relations between Canberra and Jakarta. We have to review cooperation between the two countries, including cooperation in the field of illegal migration, which has been taking place intensively over the past years. Nick Coe, the National Line News. says he regrets Australia's decision to allow a group of Papuan separatists to settle in Australia. But Cecilio Bambang Yudiono says he still wants a good relationship with Australia. As Chris Clark reports, the refugees at the centre of the argument arrived in Melbourne today. Straight off the plane, some members of the group wasted no time in making their political point. It's their push for independence that's brought them into conflict with the government in Jakarta and in turn seen them flee their homeland and find sanctuary in Australia. Today we're happy, but in West Papua land we're still suffering. Among the 42 people given three-year temporary protection visas are several children. Some are here without their parents. A group spokesman, Herman Wangai, says he's been jailed twice for protesting against Indonesian rule. Protection visa made by Australian government is great decision respecting our human right. The group's lawyer says they have well-founded fears of persecution if they return. Brutal, vicious human rights abuse, including rape, including torture, including arbitrary detention, beatings and extrajudicial extra killings. The Indonesian government rejects the charge of human rights violations and the country's president, Susilu Bambang Yudhoyono, says he regrets Australia's decision to help the Papuans. And according to the president, Indonesia will now review its cooperation with Australia on the whole issue of illegal immigration. The president says he's also concerned by a cartoon in an Australian newspaper depicting him as a dog. A similar cartoon of John Howard earlier appeared in the Indonesian press. While the immediate welfare of the refugees settling in Melbourne seems assured, the same cannot be said for relations between Canberra and Jakarta. Chris Clark, ABC News, Melbourne. West Papuans face uh, undoubted uh, vicious human rights abuse on a daily basis. Brutal, vicious human rights abuse, including rape, including torture, including arbitrary detention, beatings and extrajudicial extra killings. The arrivals have brought a face of the West Papuan unrest and political controversy right up to Australia's shores. The decision to grant 42 temporary protection visas put a strain on relations with Indonesia, sparking an explicit tit-for-tat exchange between cartoonists. It also prompted the withdrawal of the Indonesian ambassador and this today from the president. Keputusan pemerintah Australia untuk memberikan suap politik kepada 42 warga negara Indonesia yang berasal dari Papua dipandang oleh Indonesia saya pandang sebagai keputusan yang tidak tepat tidak realistik dan cenderung ke pihak The president went on to say Indonesia is reviewing its cooperation with Australia on stopping illegal migration a spokesman for the Prime Minister said tonight Mr Howard had nothing more to add to his recent comments. We understand how you feel about West Papua. We understand that, but we ask you to respect and accept the process that goes on in Australia about people coming from West Papua and also accept my assurance that uh, Australia has no designs uh, at all on the West Papua and we don't want West Papua to break away from Indonesia, we fully accept and endorse Indonesian sovereignty. The fact that Australia has uh, military to military links I think is, is indicative of the, the contradiction in the policy. We support the military yet the military is, is the primary cause of the problem that we have with Indonesia. The West Papuan spokesman was today unwilling to criticise Australia's policy but it's under greater scrutiny as violence in the province finds increasing exposure. Rolling protests like this one by students attacking officers of US gold mining giant Freeport, angry about alleged human rights abuses and environmental damage at its massive gold mine in West Papua. 
Similarly, world attention was drawn to this demonstration, blocking the road outside the university in the capital of Jayapura against Freeport and Indonesian control of the province. Melbourne-based Anglican priest Peter Woods was there and one of the few eyewitnesses to film such an incident. It was a very scary situation. It does not look like a free society. They're singing Pulang Militaire, go home military. Reverend Woods lived in West Papua in the late 70s, returning several times since then. On this trip, he was filming as the crowd of students grew. What happened then is that uh, I heard orders being given by the police to advance and for the, uh, the crowd to disperse. Shots were then fired in the air as well as, um, I think it was tear gas canisters. <laughs> Reverend Wood says eight West Papuans have been reported missing since the riot. Activists claim it's part of reprisals for the death of five Indonesian officers. With five members of the security forces apparently brutally killed, should West Papuans also be seen as aggressors in this situation? Certainly that is what the Indonesian uh, media and the Indonesian um, military would like to be shown. For Reverend Woods, a long-time supporter of Papuan independence, this and other protests are precursors to either war or forced political change. He filmed community leaders willing to speak out for independence, including the chief of the officially sanctioned local government, the Papuan People's Assembly. <laughs> untuk memberikan perhatian. Jadi saya menyerukan untuk kepada Parlemen dan pemerintah Australia, John Howard untuk tidak mengembalikan 43 suaka politik ke Indonesia. Sebab ketika mereka kembali adalah mereka pasti dibunuh, dipenjarakan, disiksa, dan tidak ada masa depan. Activists have fought for independence since 1969, when a vote widely criticised as rigged handed control of the former Dutch colony to Indonesia. And the reality is that regardless of the political outcomes in West Papua, of all of the options, it's probably going to remain part of Indonesia. Damien Kingsbury was an advisor to the drafting of legislation to give the similarly restive province of Aceh a substantial degree of autonomy. He says Indonesia is waiting till the laws are passed to propose similar moves for West Papua as the only pragmatic solution in the face of hardline military resistance to independence. There are many Papuans who do want independence, but the reality is it's going to be very difficult for them to achieve that in anything like the foreseeable future. But any agreement that can basically address uh, the majority of their political and economic concerns, I think, would really go a long way towards redressing the current problems. But Reverend Wood says Indonesia has already failed in its obligation to grant West Papuans autonomy, and the next few months will see a more concerted push for West Papuan independence unless the Australian people do do something and begin to protest to our own government, there will be blood on our hands. And we sought an interview with Indonesia's Foreign Office today without success. That report from Mary Geeran. And that's the program for tonight. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow, but for now... has got things tomorrow. moving early. Australia and Indonesia over West Papuan refugees has intensified. The Indonesian president says he won't tolerate elements in countries such as Australia that support a separatist movement in West Papua. And Susila Bambang Yudhoyono says Indonesia will review all cooperation with Australia, including the assistance it gives Australia to combat people trafficking. Tonight, Australia's relationship with Indonesia is under increased strain. The Indonesian president, Susilo Bangbang Yudhoyono, says Australia's decision to grant asylum to a group of West Papuans was incorrect. He says relations between Indonesia and Australia are now entering a difficult phase and the relationship is full of challenges. And he's raised the stakes. The Indonesian president has threatened to withdraw his country's help in the regional fight against people trafficking. The Australian government is continuing to play down the rift. I have no doubt that uh, the relationship will survive this current issue that we're, uh, we're working on. Uh, you know, we've been very, very good neighbours and certainly uh, in recent years and certainly since the election of the Udiano government. The West Papuans at the centre of the dispute have arrived in Melbourne to begin a new life, triumphant in their battle for safe haven.
and still defying Indonesia's rule of their homeland. Today we're happy, but in West Papua land we're still suffering. It's been a long journey. The group arrived at Cape York in January. They were then sent to Christmas Island before 42 of the 43 were granted temporary protection visas. Herman Wangai was imprisoned twice in West Papua for raising the banned flag of independence. He feared he would be killed if he were again arrested. He says he's seen terrible things, including Indonesian security forces shooting his friends. I see my friends shoot by gun of Indonesia in my eyes. A witness. The group's lawyer says West Papuans face abuse on a daily basis. Brutal, vicious human rights abuse, including rape, including torture, including arbitrary detention, beatings and extrajudicial extra killings. Herman Wangai says he's very grateful to the Australian government. He says for now he just wants to focus on improving his English. Richard Davis, World News, Australia. Thailand's Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra is considering his political future.